as we gather, Barabbas was a heartless, brutal criminal with anger in his heart and blood on his hands. Custom dictated that Pontius Pilate should release one prisoner at the feast of the Passover. Pilate knows Jesus is innocent and tries to get the crowd to ask for Jesus' release. But the crowd calls instead for Barabbas. The crowd condemns the innocent Jesus and demands that the guilty Barabbas receive a pardon. We are Barabbas. We are guilty and sinful and deserving of death. But we all are also Barabbas in that Jesus takes our place, takes our punishment, and sets us free. We begin by singing hymn 437, Alas, and did my Savior believe.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As we continue our Lenten journey, we watch as Jesus stands trial before the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate. Pilate knows that Jesus is innocent. Pilate tries to set Jesus free, but the people call for a thief and a murderer named Barabbas. Though Barabbas is guilty, he is set free. Though Jesus is innocent, he is condemned to die. Dear brothers and sisters, we are like Barabbas. We are guilty. We have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. Still our Heavenly Father invites us to return to Him and seek His forgiveness. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against You and against our neighbors in our thoughts, words, and deeds. We have rebelled against Your rule and reign. We know our guilt. We know we deserve the punishment of death, but we seek your abundant mercy on account of Jesus. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you. Jesus stands in your place and takes the punishment for your sin. He endures death for you. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We are pardoned. We are set free by the of Jesus. David writes in the psalm, Let this be recorded for the generations to come, so that a people yet to be created may praise the Lord. He looked down from his holy height, from heaven, the Lord looked at the earth. He heard the groans of the prisoners. He set free those who were doomed to die, that they may declare in Zion the name of the Lord, and Jerusalem is praise. When the peoples gather together and kingdoms to worship the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and will be forever. So far, the word of the Lord. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Zechariah, the ninth chapter. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thank you, God. The epistle is from 2 Corinthians, the third chapter. Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Lord, have mercy on us. The Holy Gospel for our service this evening is written by St. John in the 18th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this at your own accord, or did others say it about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. 
but my kingdom is not from the world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king. And Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate scoffed and said to him, What is truth? And after he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I should release to you one man at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Our hymn is number 439. We sing verses 1 through 5.
Heavenly Father, humble us as we hear your word. Grant us to confess our sins to you and look to Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God, who has taken away the sin of the world. In his glorious name we pray. Amen. William Jefferson was a congressman from the state of Louisiana. In 2002, he used the resources of an organization designed to encourage people to vote to ensure that his daughter would win election to the state house in Louisiana. In 1998, 2002, and 2006, he used the same organization to get his sister elected to a government post in the city of New Orleans. A few days after Hurricane Katrina hit Louisiana, Jefferson used the National Guard detachment to recover personal items from his home. And when the truck the guard was driving got stuck in the mud, Jefferson got the National Guard helicopters to come and clear his things out of his home. All the while, while people in the state of New Orleans and throughout Louisiana were suffering. In March of 2005, a company named iGate Technology sent Jefferson $400,000 to ensure that he would get the Army to buy his technology from their firm. The final straw came in August of that year when the FBI raided his home and found $90,000 in cash in his refrigerator. Was William Jefferson innocent? Not at all. He was guilty. And in 2007, he was sentenced to federal prison for 13 years, the longest sentence given to any U.S. congressman for bribery. This Lent, we are studying a series entitled, Witnesses to Our Lord's Passion. Tonight we read about Barabbas. In the Gospel read, there was a trial in process. And as in any trial, there were three important words. Innocent, guilty, and free. Innocent, that was Jesus. In fact, Pilate told him in the Gospel reading, I find no fault in this man. The rest of the New Testament attests to what Pilate said. He is absolutely and perfectly innocent. In Hebrews, without sin. In the epistle to the Corinthians, he knew no sin, nor was there any guilt in his mouth. When it comes to sin, Jesus was innocent. He was and is innocent. Guilty. That was Barabbas. Pilate asked the people this question, do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? And they cried out, not this man. Give us Barabbas. And John notes it as the gospel reading, now Barabbas was a robber. Interesting, the word John uses for robber refers to a violent outlaw who has financed his lawlessness through what he plundered and stole. Luke uses the word robber in the parable of the Good Samaritan. There was a man going from Jerusalem to Jericho who fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him and beat him and left him to die. From John's description of Barabbas, and from Jesus' parable, we learn that Barabbas was the worst kind of criminal. He wouldn't just rob you, he would kill you. In Mark's Gospel, we read that Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the city. He was probably the leader of the insurrectionists. The insurrectionists were opposed to Rome. They were also called the zealots. 
Their greatest desire was to get rid of the Roman soldiers and Roman government, and they would use murder to accomplish their ends. Rome would not crucify a petty thief or a small-time crook, but they would crucify a zealot robber. Barabbas was judged guilty and sentenced to die. He would be crucified by noon and dead by sundown. His only future was a cross, three nails, and an awful death. Innocent, that was Jesus. Guilty, that was Barabbas. Guilty, that is you, and it is also I. The Bible says we were born dead in trespasses and sins. We were blinded by the God of this world and without hope in the world. Our finest deeds, says Isaiah, amounts to a pile of dirty rags. Paul describes him in Romans, wretched man that I am. He doesn't merely say wretched man that I was. He said, wretched man that I am, right now, as a believer, we are wretched men and women because of what we have done. The Bible calls our wretchedness sin. In the scripture, sin is not merely a regrettable deed or an occasional stumble. Sin is rebellion against God and against his rule. Isaiah writes further, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one of us to our own way. You have your ways, and I have mine. But we've all turned our own ways, just like sheep. I don't like to admit it, but it's true. I'm like Barabbas, and God has declared me guilty. What is his sentence? Paul writes in Romans, the wages of sin is death. Innocent, that was Jesus. Guilty, that was Barabbas. Guilty, that is you, and it is I. Free. That was Barabbas. A Roman guard went to Barabbas' cell, opened the door and said, Barabbas, you're free. They chose to set you free. Free, that is Barabbas. Free, that is also you, and it is I. How could this be? Jesus endured not just the Roman nails, the mockery and the spear, but he also suffered the holy demands of God's law as he hung on the cross. God does not overlook sin. God cannot overlook sin. He is holy. He is sovereign. He is perfect. He said he would punish sin and he must. That is why God placed all our sins on Jesus. It is correct to say Jesus substituted himself for the world. It is life-changing to say Jesus substituted himself for me. Our sins, they are many and they are disgusting. God's mercy, it is infinitely greater and everlasting. I am free. And so are you. David wrote in the psalm, the Lord sets the prisoners free. Paul wrote in the book of Romans, the law of the spirit of life has set you free. And in John, in John's revelation, he writes, Jesus has freed us from our sins by his blood. 
There are a million ways to become a prisoner. There's only one way to be free. Jesus. His liberating power has set us free from the condemnation our sins deserve. His liberating power has set us free from our painful past. His liberating power sets us free from a worrisome future. No one can take the freedom that Jesus gives us away from us. We are free. And there is no power on this earth or in hell itself that can change that we are free in Jesus. Innocent, guilty, free. These are the three most important words in a trial. Which would you say is the most life-changing? Innocent, guilty, free. St. John writes, if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is you, and it is I, like Barabbas, free. In the name of Jesus, amen. We continue with the Magnificent, uh, but we're going to be using hymn 934, different from the program. So hymn 934, which is the Magnificent, but that's what we will be singing. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people, 
according to their needs. For all those who are incarcerated, that they may know the power of your love that liber liberates them from enslavement to sin, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who are in the margins of society, often overlooked, for the homeless, the orphan, the poor, and the friendless, that we may follow your example and show compassion to those most in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all who are lonely, shut in, separated from family, or struggling to make friends, that you might be present with them and surround them with a loving community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who struggle to accept your grace and mercy, that you might soften their hearts to know that your word of forgiveness and freedom is sure and certain. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all those who have rejected you, wandering off on their own, that you might draw them to yourself and show them your love that the world cannot give. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for all those who are ill, injured, recovering, or preparing for surgery, those that we have in our heart, we pray silently for now. We especially pray for Francis and for Rosie. To strengthen them with your healing and patience through their afflictions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for all those who grieve the loss of loved ones, those you might have on your heart, to comfort them in the sure and certain hope that death does not find the final word, let us pray to the Lord. Lord o God, from whom all come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be and abide with you always. Amen. Amen. We sing hymn number 883.
Let us now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.